Flapjack and Beans. Uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, today I thought I'd just do a little walk around my uh, 1290 Super Adventure S. Uh, it's now 18 months old, 16,000 miles closely into it. Uh, coming from BMWs, I used to criticise KTM a lot. Uh, for various reasons, but having owned one now and covered some miles, I just thought I'd do a little show you around it, what it all is. Uh, and I have to say, uh, I'm talking a lot about build quality, not about functions, but a little bit about BMWs. I had several offs on BMWs over the many years I rode them. Uh, some little tiny offs. And we have this thing, me and a colleague of mine, Mick the Saw, Toss us Saw, about plastics. Rightfully so. And you'll see how they get into a bit of detail here that uh, the KTMs aren't what everybody thinks they are. Certainly what I thought as a snobby BMW rider in that time. That I will criticise KTMs and I have to say if they were built like this, I was in the wrong, they were in the right maybe. But anyway, that's a load of rubbish. Let's, let's just get on to this. So I just want to show you around first. Right, so uh, this is not a stock sprocket on the rear here. This is a KTM accessory. But that's wearing well. I was concerned about coming from shaft to chains, and I've not had a problem. Uh, it's been adjusted probably twice, as I say, in 15,000 miles. Uh, it's it's great condition. There's not a spot of rust on this bike anywhere you look. And I'd like to go around a 15,000 mile look at the stand look. Uh, paint dropped off the BMW straight away. Well, there's no rust. Suspension unit. This is an extra here again, but that's just a little thing. I got a little modification here, which you might be interested in. Being a size 13 foot shoe, feet, whatever you want to call it. I always struggle with this. I'd still like it a bit longer, and a tad little higher, but I put that little spacer in there. Look, can you see that there? Which brings your shift change out just a little bit better for you. Uh, that's dropped off there. I don't know what that is. That's like a little rubber bung that goes in there. Not sure what that does. But it's missing and i've noticed on quite a few bikes but the point i'm getting to here all these nuts and bolts look you can see there look in the swing arm look go, go look at a bmw or go look at a lot of other bikes i'm not just criticizing bmw that's not what this video is about i'm this video is about just showing you about my bike but you look in there look on the cylinder head there's no rust they're copper bolt tops of course uh the whole thing of it you know it's it's built. It's, it's. I used to say that you know, you're not very well built. You're not very well built. Well, everything. Well, look again up here. There's under your, under your engine there. Look, you see. Radiator guards. <coughs> They're an accessory. Them radiator guards. They're well worth buying them. They're only cheap. The KTM again. But Brembo brakes. They've been very good. Floating discs. They're good. The wheels. Again, these. Black wheel weights, I like those on, I'll sell those. Uh, <coughs> my wheels, I've had no problem. I don't like these tyres as good as I thought I was going to do these. I know a lot of people rant and rave about these Michelin Rogue Pilot 6s, but they're not for me. When uh, when I'm ready, I shall certainly go back to Conti's uh, Trailer Tech 3s. They're a far better tyre, in my opinion. These fine banding, the fine thing. They're actually a better tyre in the wet than they are in the dry, I, I think, anyway. But what do I know? Well, that's, that's my opinion. Again, getting round here, look. No rust on, look. All these, go and look at these on other bikes. Go and look, no rust. This is this is 18 months old. Been through all weathers. We were riding on Sunday, Saturday rather, in a good storm. Again, no, no rust, look. Look. Built good, built good. And I'll take it off the ramp in a minute and just show you something I want to show you. Acropovic, I mean, that comes off and goes on, and I've had to stock pipe on when we went to Italy, as you've probably seen on a previous video. Uh, right, welcome back to the channel. As I say, I've got the bike off the ramp now. I'll just continue on with my waffling, just to show you what I'm talking about with this bike. So, again, Touratech top box. Um, okay, don't, don't produce all this wobbling, what everybody goes on about, some wobbling. Uh, stuff in there that I just keep. Again, I've shown you this before. The camera gear sits in here. Waterproof, rucker stuff. Fine, it's not a problem. Easy to lock up. Pretty well made, I suppose. What it is. 
So we've got Ergo Comfort Seat. Don't know, so don't carry passengers. As you might notice here, my foot pegs are off. Rear, rear passengers, I don't take passengers. These are little things which you fit for when you're fitting your panniers on, which my panniers are residing here, look. Which they've, they've worked pretty well. They're, they're not the best panniers. None of them are. And nobody really likes panniers on. This Coolmax seat, this is another thing which we come from BMWs, as I say, and we had these on the BMWs and we were riding back from Garmisch in Bavaria and it was very, very hot. We bought these off the guy in Wales who makes them and I got one for the KTM as I had it on there. And it, it just lifts your bum off a little bit and uh, it keeps your bum a bit cooler. And I find it a bit comfier because under there, as you can see, under there is the... Uh, Ergo heated seat, which I do like the heated seat on my bum. Uh, but it's not the, they say it's a, you know, it's a comfy seat, but that's, we'll get to the, to the criticisms about it in a minute. Well, that's on the list is the seat. Now then, back to the bike. None of this, this head shake business, which I've read about and listened to, uh, head stop bearings tightened up, everything. To me, this bike's been perfect after that. I did get a little bit of a wobble at one one point, but it went round and got rid of that. And controls here. Right, well, on Saturday, we were outside a Harley Davidson shop, and both myself and Tossa Saw's bike, there were three of these, Moe's bike started up. He was on the left, we were on the right. And it's the first time ever I've hit that button there to put the power on, and nothing, nothing come. But you just take your key out, touched it down here, where there's a activated sensor here, and off she come into life. Because God knows what happened at Harley's shop. Why that did that, I don't know. But anyway, this little kapouch here, that's where I have my USB. And I use an iPhone 10, which I've currently got an iPhone 14 coming this week. This phone is actually sold. But this phone fits perfectly in there, and the iPhone 14 is no different. So it does, it, it does hold a phone. I know a lot of people are criticising the BMW and other bikes about not being able to put the phone in, but this bike connectivity is the thing I really enjoy about it. Having had intermittent connectivity with other bikes made in Bavaria, which I know a lot of people are still having, this bike connects straight away. So we'll just give you an idea. We put the power on and you get all this malarkey with race. That's an XT sat nav, which is what I use, which I find wonderful, right? So, another extra is that, which I quite like. I've got extra of these levers, which I quite like here. Although I've got a quick shift, you don't use your clutch as much, I know, but it's nice to have that little lever. More finite adjustments in them. On this side here, you've got your favorite switch, which you flick it each way. It won't work because side stands up. Let's put the side stand up. Right, so now you flick it that way, and that gets you to your audio. Let's put some audio on and just show you what I mean. So in here, say, we'd have radio player. We're going into a radio player. Gold playing. See, now there it is, gold. Obviously, that's going through your headset, not out of the phone when you've got your headset connected, so I've not got on my head. So bear with me with that. So this side now, say you want to change track, flick that switch to the right. There you go. So you want to change again, press again. There you go, another channel. So say you want to pause, so you're now in a car park or you want to talk to somebody at traffic lights, press that button there. And you see it light up there and it stopped. Press the centre button again. And it starts straight away. No fanning about. I really love the connectivity of this bike. And you just press that, which is like your home button, back. And you get back to your screen. So, from that side on this button, again, it's just like a, it's intuitive. But it is for me and I'm dyslexic. Then you press that, you get your bike information, which you can scroll down, down. Suspension, crew, heating, audio, settings. Oh, you can press your home button again, go back, and then this time, press it twice across, and you can see your 
obviously the tire pressures aren't reading now because of but there they are look you've got your water your fuel your oil keep going down see your battery you see what your service wants doing got software edition you've got it 15,367 miles any warnings you got a green tick you're good to go and I think that's really interesting and then again on this next switch the one I bring it to me this time and I have it set there for my modes so I'm in currently in street mode so if I go forward I can go to sports mode it'll ask me to close the throttle or you can go rain mode off-road rally mode rally mode's interesting because if you say yes to rally mode let's see if it'll do it without engine running if you say yes to rally mode it actually puts it in a in a different clock let's just start it up now then rally mode street mode I don't know oh there we go you have to press the old button so now you go back to an entirely, you've got an entirely different clock now. Look at your big neutral. Even I can see that. And this, now your cruise control button here, and your cruise control button there. Right. And, it's, and this time when you press the plus, you'll see it putting on more traction. So, oh, if you want to take traction off, you can take, and as you go down. And that's what you get. You've got, you're in street mode, then if you go back to your bike, you're now in rally. That's, so that's how it'll stay. Let me just turn it off. <laughs> bit noisy into it, that one. Let's just put it back on. So that's how you can have it. A lot of people ride in rally mode and they put the suspension in comfort mode, which I've got mine in auto. I'm a fat git, I like it in auto. So it's in road and street at the moment. I use street and uh, sports all the time, mainly. That's what I do. So put it back, and then you can go to your favourites again. Sorry, this that way. Put it back to your favourites. Go back to rally street. Back to street. Back. And now we're back in street mode. We're in street mode. No heated grips on. No seat on. That's the trip that we did on Saturday. 55 miles per gallon fuel consumption. The easiest safety check you could come on. So yeah, so that's the easiness of the bike. This is a different screen. This is this the KTM touring screen, which I, I like. It's easy. You can actually do this while you're moving. I know a lot of people say but you can. You've got two switches each side. So I just ride with it. Probably about there. It's fine. You've got a 12 volt connection, which I've never never used. You've got fully automatic suspension here, semi suspension. You've got your cruise control, you've got your indicators, which a lot of people don't like this button, but you have to press it in rather than just press it down rather than in. Horn, which is useless like all most bikes. <coughs> it's okay. Like that. So, yeah, that's about really about it, really. Um, you know, more extras on it I can really show you, I don't think. Heated seat, I've shown you that. Now then, the things I don't like about it is this. When you come around to the front of the bike, one of them spots there, extras, of course, yeah. I love this daytime riding light, but it changes as it senses dark and lightness, and it goes off to an headlight. You can't have the headlight on and the riding light, and you can't, you can't select which you want on. And sometimes, if you come to a junction, it'll change from DSL riding light, and it'll switch to an headlight, and a bloke thinks you're flashing him out of a junction. Why KTM have done that, I, it's beyond me. And I've wrote to them, I've tried to speak to them. The, the, that's getting now to the criticisms of KTM. My first criticism is, as a company and as an owner of this bike, you try and talk to anybody in customer service or anybody at Silverstone where they're based, and you might as well talk to the wind. And they don't reply to emails, they don't reply to letters. And that's my biggest criticism, and it concerns me that this bike, in April, will be coming up to its two-year warranty, although it's in perfect condition i wouldn't fault it can't fault it for that you know it's, it's build oh this is what i wanted to show you while we're going on about that just get hold of a bmw like i mean i'm saying bmw because i don't have 
got the right, I've had 11, and go down here to the bulkhead, as I call it, and do that. Just squeeze the plastic there. Now, and look at all the shit what a BMW is always in at you. Look down here, this bike, it's as solid as a bloody, look at it here. I just, and I cleaned this bike yesterday after riding in rain all day Saturday. Look at it, you know, it's, it's easy to clean, and I love that. I just love how solid all this is. I mean, I'm really going at it here. It's, I fell off at a set of traffic lights on a rock. I hit a rock and the front wheel threw me off. Just a little eye side, I fell off. The BMW here, Crash Bars, this is an adventure, 2000, uh, 2011 model. No, more, 2020 model. 2018 model, sorry, let's get that right. 2018. And the crash bar here all bent. I pulled, took crash bar off and run there where it built. All the plastics were smashed. And it just, this is a bike, it just fell off outside. It was horrendous. Cost me 480 quid. Put it back, right. Anyway. So, I'm not saying I never go back to a BMW. You'd have to build them a bit better. The build quality is going downhill fast, in my opinion. But yeah, again, down here. Brilliant. Brilliant. Now then, the things I don't like. I have to turn this off. When uh, you come to a fuel station and you want gas up, it's all it's all fully keyless. Look, beautiful, beautiful. But the filler is sort of down here, and it has to fill the two bladder tanks. So you've got a bladder tank here and a bladder tank on the other side. So it sort of fills them first, fills the other side, and then it starts to fill this tank here, which is the third tank. And if you've not got that part dead right, it's coming off. It's a, sometimes it can be a nightmare and a, lot, and a bit time consuming to fill, particularly when you've got agitate, agi, agitated friends behind you. But anyway, that's one criticism. The other one's the headlight, and the third one is the seats. But other than that, a khaki motorcycle. I'd highly recommend it, highly recommend it. And as I say, I'm just showing it you, I'm just walking around to show you that this bike is now 18 month old and I, and I think it's doing really well so if you are considering buying one I, I can highly recommend them and I think they're good I think they're good I mean they're a lot of fun definitely an hooligans bike if you want it to be or it can be a sedate bike you can just cruise and limble along and it's it's nice anyway I don't know whether that little thing helped anybody or I might do but if you know I can do regards KTM's and you need anything I can help you with, give me a shout, leave a comment. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to the channel and give it a like. Come on, don't be mean. All right, I'd say, da-da.